I'm Carrie George with CIBN Connect and today I'm going to talk about the 10 best things that you can do to your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn can be a great way for you to make a lot of money on the internet. All you have to do is have great conversations with people, but guess what? You can't even get started if your LinkedIn profile doesn't look super hot. So today I'm going to talk about the 10 best ways to make it pop. Doing these things is going to really help you with your business. We once had a 74 year old insurance agent who joined CIBN Connect and I encouraged him to follow these 10 steps. Three weeks after doing it, he was able to actually land a large deal that significantly increased his income that year. And the reason that he got the deal was because someone found him on LinkedIn who had been a friend of a friend and it ended up with him getting a sale, not just of one individual, but of an entire family and then later a corporation. This made a huge difference for him and it can for you as well. We make thousands of dollars a year off of LinkedIn. These points are gonna help you do the same. Number one, the first thing you wanna do is fill out your whole profile. I know I shouldn't probably have to mention this, most people should know to fill out their whole profile, yet I see many LinkedIn profiles that are not completely filled out. Things are missing. This is a great opportunity to showcase who you are, what you do, things that are important to you. You might want to talk about what your offer is. LinkedIn is like having an extra page on your website, but it's free if you're not using the paid to premium program, so fill it all out and utilize it. Make it easy for people to find out more about who you are and what you do. I'd recommend that you actually book a date with yourself. Sit down at your computer, spend a half hour to an hour, and fill the entire thing out. You'll be glad you did. Number two, have a nice professional photograph. So what kind of photograph is a professional photograph? Well, with you standing with a collared shirt on looking professional. You should not have a picture of you holding a fish. If you are in business, you should have a picture of yourself in a business setting or at least in business attire. That makes sense. It would be fabulous if you had a professional take these shots for you because if you had several shots taken, you could rotate them out and then every time you put up a new profile shot, say once a month or once a week, it makes everybody come back and look at your profile again. You see a notice goes out when you change your profile picture to all the people who follow you. And doesn't it make sense you'd want them to look at you more than just once? In fact, it takes seven to 14 touches to get a sale. So every time you change your picture, you are touch, touch, touching them. It's good for business. Change your profile picture. You don't want to have this kind of a thing going on with a selfie and they can see your arm up there. It looks terrible. You also don't want to take a picture that you've had from the past, maybe where you were standing with your ex, and now we see that you've cut out the body and there's a hand up here on your left hand shoulder. Don't do that. You want to have a professional shot that looks good. If you can't afford a professional to take your photograph, at least get somebody else to use your cell phone while you stand in front of a beautiful picture, something with some color, maybe outdoors, or in a place that is well lit so you look good while you're standing there smiling so you look approachable in your collared shirt. That's a great way to represent yourself on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also not a place to be wearing beachwear. It's not a dating site. It's a professional site where professionals gather to do business with one another. You want to look professional. Number three, there is a great opportunity here. It's your backdrop. There's a backdrop behind the picture of your photo. It's a nice, wide, beautiful place to put a picture. You should utilize it. It should not be empty or looking like blue or that pastel background that they've now gone to on LinkedIn. It should look fabulous. So what do you do that makes it look fabulous? Well, go to pixabay.com and at least download a picture of your city and put that behind you. It's nice and colorful, it looks great. You might want to get something branded that has your logo or some offer written right across it. That also would look great. 
but you want it to be utilized. You don't want it to be sitting there blank and empty and looking like you don't care about your LinkedIn profile at all. Number four, email sync. This is a fabulous opportunity to go to your email account and sync all of the people who you have had any type of dealings with in the past to your LinkedIn profile. It increases your connection, and as it increases your connections, what happens is more people hear the messaging that you're putting out. You want lots of people to see the messaging that you're putting out. You want them to be real people, and people that you have talked to before are excellent because it takes seven to 14 touches to get a sale, and you are touch, touch, touching them every time you're posting on LinkedIn if they're connected to you. You simply go to your Connections tab and follow these instructions. If you really get stuck, just go to Google and ask Google, how do I sync my email list with my LinkedIn profile? Number five, add all of your business connections, including business cards. Are you one of those people that has a big box of business cards that's just been hanging out in your office somewhere you've been collecting for years? It's time to put those cards to work. With anti-spam legislation, old contacts are sometimes difficult to start sending emails to. You might not qualify to send them emails without having some difficulty there. However, it is certainly fine to invite them to become connections on LinkedIn. That is within the parameters of what is acceptable. So go ahead and reach out to those folks. Maybe you want to put them into a spreadsheet, download the spreadsheet into your LinkedIn connections. And LinkedIn will send them a message and say, hey, would you like to connect with you on LinkedIn? And as they do, your LinkedIn connections grow. You want lots of connections. Because if you don't have lots of connections, you're destined to buy ads forever. And if you enjoy paying a lot of money for ads, then definitely don't add any connections because you'll get to do that forever. You would not hire a radio station to put out an ad that you had created if you knew that they had less than 500 listeners, would you? So why do you think that you're going to get anything from any of your social media platforms if you have less than 500 followers or connections? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Yet, I talk to people all the time who will say to me, I don't understand it. I've made all this great content and I'm putting it out on social media and nobody's responding. I'm not getting any calls. It seems to be fruitless. It's been a waste of time. I can just about always go look them up on LinkedIn and Facebook and other social media channels and find out that they have less than a thousand followers and connections combined. It takes 10,000 followers or connections before you start making an impact. So start working on getting those numbers up. The more connections you have, the better it is. So things like syncing your emails and adding your business cards really, really add up. You want to get on that right away. Number six, join some groups. If you start joining some groups of people that have an interest in the things that you have an interest in, or if you join some groups where people would be in your target market, this is a great use of your time on LinkedIn. Also, as you meet people in those groups, it's easy to invite them to become connections and to raise your connections. So this is something you want to do. When you join groups, there's often rules that have been written out as you go into them. You want to actually look at those rules. If they don't allow you to post or to talk about your business, that's probably not the best group for you. So you want to look for groups where it's more open and you're able to post and conversation is encouraged amongst the members of that group. Number seven, write an article. There's an opportunity not just for posts but also to write articles on LinkedIn. And when you write an article, it's like adding an extra page of information of what you can do and what they might expect to see when they are going to do some work with you. So for instance, if you could offer some valuable tips, like the top five ways to do this, or the seven mistakes that you should avoid if you're wanting to accomplish this. Something simple like that, but creating an article will give us another page to look at when we look you up. And the more we know about you, the more we feel that we like you, the more we feel that we trust you, the more likely it is that you're going to get contacted to do business. Number eight. 
Put your phone number and your email address at the top of the summary or the about section. Now, I know there's someone out there right now watching this video and you're saying, well, why would I do that? I put it into the contact information in the profile. Yes, you did. However, that's not enough. There's this interesting thing about LinkedIn. If I look you up online, I Google your name, your LinkedIn profile comes up very, very high in the search engines, usually in the top one, two, three spot under your name. What do I see there if I'm not a LinkedIn user or I'm not connected to you in my first line of connections on LinkedIn? Guess what? If I'm not a LinkedIn user, I won't see much at all. I'll see your name and a very little bit of information at the top of the summary of the About section. However, if you have put your phone number and your email address right in the top line of that section, if somebody has found you through Google, that phone number will be blue, which means they can take their cell phone, they can dial the number boop, right now and be talking to you. Isn't that exciting? That's a client that you land immediately because you made it easy for them to find you. I also meet people from time to time who will tell me, I don't want to put my phone number on things. I don't want my phone number out there where people can find it. Well, perhaps you might think about something other than owning your own business then. Because if you're in business, you need to have a big, I'm open for business sign over your life so that people can actually reach out and buy the products and services that you offer. If they can't find you, they can't use you. If they can't find you in a matter of seconds, they're going to your competitor. So you need to make it easy for them to get to you. Number nine, make a video and post it to your LinkedIn profile. It's a great idea to have a signature video, something that talks about who you are, what you do, what your offering is, so that you can actually send it to people on the bottom of your signature on every email that you send out. But another place that you would like to feature this is on LinkedIn. If you've posted it on a YouTube channel already, great, but you want to, again, post it in the About section of yourself in your LinkedIn profile. There's a spot there for videos. Utilize it, make it interesting, let them find you. There's also another interesting phenomenon about posting videos on LinkedIn. If you have a YouTube channel where you're putting your videos and you share the link for the video that you've made into LinkedIn, it's typical that you will get a dozen, two dozen, maybe 30 looks at that video over the period of a day. However, once you have put it into YouTube, you still have the original copy on your desktop download it directly into LinkedIn as something that they can see directly on the LinkedIn platform. Yes, it's going to disappear in the feed, but it's interesting that the number of views on that video, because it was posted directly to LinkedIn, will be much higher. Probably 200 to 500 people will look at it if you have a significant following. It's a much better response ratio. Some people have asked me, should I just then do it there and not on YouTube? Well, on YouTube, it doesn't disappear. So there's value in that as well. And there's value in having YouTube followers, but it's a completely different kind of platform. So the answer is yes and yes, do both. And number 10 on our list of the 10 best things that you can do to your LinkedIn profile, make positive posts daily. Every day, post positive things, make positive quote posts say something positive, react to somebody positively. Don't just say, I like something, because that disappears. Actually put words to it. That is awesome. This is great. Make share posts. Do some positive posting every day. You can give away free tips. You can have my top five things to do in a blog. Whatever it is, use this opportunity to every day make some kind of post. And if you're a very busy person, like many of us are, use some aggregator like Hootsuite to do it for you so that you sit down once a month and actually work out what you want to say to the audience that follows you on LinkedIn and you program it so that you're talking a little bit every day on your personal profile and you look like you're very engaged so that people want to do business with you. Happy capitalism.